All right, let's try this again. If you're new to the platform, let me know what city, what state you're coming in from. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know what country you're coming in from so that we all can kind of get familiar with each other. I'm going to let a few hundred people join, and then I'm going to go in. Also, I'm going to give out some uh, shout-outs. So if you got one of those weird names on your Facebook, uh, you know, just... Drop your name. 305 in the building. What's up? What's up, Ma? What it look like? What it look like, Kelvin? Tommy Oliver? What it do? Florida in the house back to back. Trey Bell. What's up, Chicago? Man, it's been a long time since I've been on here live. Uh, Estina, what is that? Estina, Jameson, Dallas, D Town, Preston Sims, what up, Baton Rouge, 225, Detroit, Crystal, what it do? I'm going to give a few more shots out and I'm going to go in, y'all, because I got I got some more business to take care of. But I just I just really want to drop this on y'all. It's been, it's been weighing heavy on my mind this morning, so I got to get it off my chest. Lee Brown, what up, Indiana? Who is that? George, Louisiana in the building. Taki Bell, it's the South Lake Jackson area. All right. Bruce Lee, yeah, I'm, I'm going to attack that a little later. I'll, I'll get back to Donald Trump impeachment. This, I'll get back to that. Okay, y'all, I'm going in. So I dropped a post on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you need to because I, I drop a lot of stuff that you may not see on Facebook. And my face, my Instagram is Willie D Live. Check it out. Okay. So I dropped this post and I basically was... Uh, talking to the men. I addressed it to the men that are out there in the streets doing what they do, got to watch their back, always on the lookout, that type of thing, taking chances. The main uh, premise of the post was to just remind dudes that everything you're jumping out there to do, and, and if you say you're doing it for your kids, you really got to reevaluate your, your position. Because whatever it is that you're trying to buy for your kids, they're still going to need it after you get locked up or you end up dead. They're going to need all those things. The difference is that you are going to magnify the problem a million times once you end up in jail or dead because when daddy is out of the picture, the house is left to be raped and pillaged. You got dudes who might try to put their hands on your daughter. You can't defend them. You can't give a game to even watch out for those type of dudes. The guy that a mama might be trying to date, a lot of times them dudes just trying to jump in to see what they can get and Sooner or later, they start looking at your daughter. Then you got your son who's trying to fill your shoes. And he's trying to grow up too fast. But he want to be a man. He's thinking, this is what I need to be. I need to be a man. I need to protect. So he becomes aggressive because he's trying to defend the household. Because a lot of times people see a household with no man, they try to take advantage of it. So now he's trying to become a man too fast. And he's jumping out there and he's trying to hustle. And he ends up 
getting a jacket on his back, before he can even see what the world really is about, he's already at a social disadvantage because those people didn't put him on some kind of papers or he locked up and now he got to finish out his manhood or finish out becoming a man in jail. Thus, the cycle repeats. Now, I'm not saying this to y'all because I think that I'm on my high horse or something like that. I'm saying this out of love only because if I, if, if I didn't want to hear any, uh, you know, get any backlash, I would just go on about my business, man, and not tell you nothing. I wouldn't say anything. But see, a lot of us men, you know, we talk about how sensitive women are, but we're real sensitive when it comes to our actions, doing things that are counterproductive. We don't like nobody telling us nothing. And the first time somebody try to tell us something about our actions, the first thing we do is become defensive and we go on the attack mode. We want to attack. We want to call that person out, start talking about oh, you, this, this, and, you know, instead of taking that information and saying, man, damn, how can I take this information and use this information to my benefit? We get hella sensitive. Like my man said, we get hella sensitive. So understand when I tell you this, this coming from a place of love. I've been there. I've done that. I had a guy that tell me, and he's a fan, and I appreciate him, but he told me that I don't understand. It's easy for me to say because I'm up on the mountain and I'm looking down. How can I tell you what's going on on the mountain if I'm not on the ground? Well, in order to get up on the mountain, don't you have to be on the ground? You see, I was on the ground. See, we don't like listening to people who done done the shit we already did. I'm trying to give them the motherfucking game and tell you how I did it. I'm telling you how it goes. I'm telling you I did it all. But we don't want to listen. Oh, that's easy for you to say you up on the mountain. As if success is some type of indictment. Listen, man. I've been there. I've been in the rut. I come from the gutter. Nothing. The abuse, all everything you can name, the alcoholism, all of that stuff, I lived all through it, okay? I've been, before I got to where I am, before I got the success, the so-called success, I cut grass. I, I pump gas. I raw, I slanged. I kicked the doors in. I dropped cats. I did all of that, okay? And I eventually got popped. I went to jail. Me and my best friend, Ronald Hopes, we sitting in the, in the holding tank with a court-appointed lawyer. We got a $10,000 bond. We can't get out of jail. $10,000 bond, you only need $1,000. And we sat in jail for four months. And that court-appointed lawyer walked in there the first time he walked in there and he said they're offering you 25 years what do you want to do I'm sitting there watching my whole life flash in front of me I'm thinking whoa I'm thinking man how old I'm gonna be I'm thinking uh, my mama could die while I'm in here I'm thinking I'm gonna miss graduation, I'm going to miss birthdays, I'm going I'm to miss uh, weddings, I'm going to miss all of my youth, I'm thinking about all the things I'm going to miss, I'm thinking how old I'm going to be before I can start a family, I'm like, man, whatever happened, if I end up on probation, if I end up getting this thing dismissed or I got to do some time from now on. I'm going to leave these people shit alone, man. I ain't letting them catch me up like that. I'm moving around. 
I'm finna move around, man. I'm finna get my mind focused on getting it the right way. Because just like y'all, I knew that that was a trap. And I walked right into the damn trap anyway. You can't make these damn excuses forever. We know what we're up against. We know that these people are setting traps for us. We know that the jobs are limited. We understand that they're targeting us for failure. We know this shit. If we know all of this, why are we constantly talking about jobs? Ain't no jobs. Ain't no jobs. Ain't nobody gonna help me. Don't nobody wanna help you. That's easy for you to say. Man, that all amounts to nothing but excuses, man. Excuse ain't nothing but a reason to fail. That's all an excuse is. An excuse is nothing but a reason to fail. I made my mind up right then and there. I would not make excuses. Whatever I get myself into, I got to get myself out of. Okay, you fucked around and had kids too early. First of all, let me back up. I also understood, even at 17 years old, the reason that I was out there doing a lot of things that I was doing is because I came from insufficient living. I didn't have it. I said right then and there, I made a vow to myself, even before 17, well before 17, that I would not bring children into this world until I could afford them. That's me taking responsibility, man. That ain't me blaming nobody else. Me. Ain't nobody pulled my dick out and stuck it in nothing. Every time it happened, I did that. That's on me. I ain't got nobody to blame but myself if I bring children into this world and I can't take care of them. So now, if that's my position, if that's what I find myself up against, I got to figure out a way to make it right and still be in my kid's life. Make sure I'm, I got two things, two things you got to always do. You got to stay free, stay alive. Stay free, stay alive. That's the secret to winning. You coming from where we come from, you come from the gutter, stay free, stay alive. That's all you got to do. Everything else can be worked out. Even if you ain't got all the money, you ain't got everything off the bat. That's cool. You will get it eventually if you work. You work for it, you will get it. I don't give a damn if you work in a minimum wage job. You work for what you want and you will get it. Apply that same street hustle to the corporate hustle and you will be unstoppable. These dudes in corporate America ain't willing to risk their life for nothing. Most of them ain't willing to risk their freedom for anything. But we got all of this grind. We got all of this uh, hustle in us. All of this energy. And we're using it up so fast. We're depleting our energy. And then giving the rest of it to the state. Making ourselves slaves all over again. So my kids still need it. They still need it. Now... They, got, they need it, but now I'm not there at all. So now one of the most important things in life that they need is out of the picture and the house is wide open and you just repeated the damn cycle because in your mind, I got to do what I got to do. I got to go get it. And hey man, I ain't saying that it's easy, bro. I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm telling you it's hard. I've been there. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. Before I got here, before I signed with Rap A Lot, before I became a ghetto boy via records, I was a ghetto boy in real life. So I was, when I got out, I started working at Kentucky Fried Chicken, man. I was a cook. We, we all caught up on what people thinking, what other people think of us. 
it, people that think of people think lowly of people who have entry level type jobs. These are normally poor ass people themselves. They broke ass people or they don't mean nothing. They're nobodies. They don't count because anybody that has money, anybody that's got some damn sense, know you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. I know people who were started off as cooks. Actually, back up. I know people who started off as dishwashers who now own restaurants. Starting off somewhere. You got to respect the process. We don't respect the process. That's our biggest motherfucking problem. We don't respect the process. I started knocking on doors. I used to be a subscription seller for the Houston Chronicle. I was the dude knocking on the door. You peeping through the hole trying to see who it is. I was humiliated on many occasions. People telling me to get off their property. People done told me, get off my property. I've had racist white dudes tell me, get off my property. I'm, I got to get off their property. Sometimes I stood out in the rain, in the heat, didn't make a dollar. Go to bed, get up, go right back out there on the ass and do it again. I've had situations where little young white boys was younger than me, 14, 15 years old. They get dropped off in the nice neighborhoods. It, within an hour or two, they're in the truck, in the van, riding around, smoking weed, chilling. They already got their orders. I get dropped off in a bad neighborhood and I got to go make something work. I, gotta, I get dropped off in a neighborhood where people had had bad experiences with the newspaper already or people that are on marginal incomes. These guys go get dropped off in a brand new neighborhood. You know, soon as you, when you get in a brand new neighborhood, you get a brand new house, everything brand new. You want everything. You're signing up for everything. You know how easy that was for them to sign up? Versus me, and I'm a grown man and I need this money to pay my rent. They getting the money to, blow, to smoke weed and, and kick it and buy clothes. So don't tell me nothing about being on the top of the damn mountain. What it's like to be on top of the mountain. Like I don't know what it's like to be on the ground. You got to start on the ground before you can get on top of the mountain. All of this stuff, man, ain't nothing but excuses. All of, this ain't... It, Listen, man, ain't nothing but an excuse. This is America. America got a lot of foul shit going on with it, right? We know, we know this. We know all of the stuff that we're up against. Even, even with all of that, anybody in America can become a millionaire. It's all kind of things that you can do. You just got to grind. You got to respect the process. It's the process to becoming a millionaire. Or it's the process to even become getting six figures. It's the process. When you try to get a job, you don't go. Uh, the thing to do when you're trying to get a job, you go. I mean, first of all, you make sure that you're qualified, right? You go get yourself the skill set to be qualified to get the job, right? Then you fill out an application. Then you wait on a call back. You don't show up at the job unexperienced, like, hey, uh, can I, can I, I want to get a job. Well, what can you do? What do you do? Uh, I don't know. Or you just sign some, something saying, well, I, I want to be this. I want this position. And then you, uh, as soon as you walk out the door, you start calling the people every five minutes. Hey, uh, uh. Hey, y'all Y'all made a decision. Hey, y'all made a decision. Hey, y'all made a decision. No, you respect the process. You sit back and you wait on a, on a call back. That's respecting the process. We don't respect the process. That's why a lot of us like to gamble, shoot dice. We want to hit the lick real, real quick. We want everything to happen real quick. And that quick shit going to get you licked. It's going to get you knocked, going to get your head knocked off. Respect the process so you can build something and look forward to the future so you can say, even if it takes 20 years, do you know the average millionaire takes the average millionaire 20 years 
to become a millionaire? If you put that thought process in mind, you'll be all right. I know people who sold water, bottled water on the corner. I know, I know a dude right here in Houston. And if you live in Houston, you may be able to attest to this. I know a dude who live who, who, who is right here in Houston who sells bottled water and candy. He is rich. You hear me? And he's been doing it for over 20 years. And guess what? He don't have any legs. He rolls his wheelchair in the medium, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sells bottled water. You know how much bottled water costs? You can get 40 bottles of water at Sam's for $4. That means that after you sell four bottles, you got $36 profit. Man, I don't know how much clear it got to be. Do that over and over and over again. Make $10 and do the same thing. You get your $100. Do that 10 times. You, get, you got $1,000. Do the same thing. You got $10,000. Repeat that 10 times. You got $100,000. Repeat that 10 times. You got a million dollars. You're a millionaire. This is what I'm trying. This shit ain't, man. This, man, it ain't rocket science, man. It's not rocket science. It's about grinding. You know, it's about saying, I'm not going to make excuses. Okay, you hooked up with the wrong person. You went and got the wrong job. They did you dirty. They fired you, whatever. Okay, time to man up. Go get another job. All that sitting around complaining about how dirty they did you and red thinking about going back to kill the manager and the supervisor and just, oh man, every time I get up, somebody kick me down and feeling sorry for yourself, that pity party shit, man, that ain't gonna get you nowhere. I can sit around here and complain about my dealings in the music industry, who did me wrong, who did me, who did me dirty and all that stuff. You know what? My kids don't give a damn about that. All they know is that they hear mind playing tricks still being played on the radio and we can't go nowhere without somebody asking for a picture or an autograph and they want to know where they shit is. Where's my trust fund? Where's my college stuff? Where's my money? That's what they want to know. They don't care that me and Brad or Bill or Jay or anybody had a beef or what. They don't care about none of that. They want theirs, what's theirs, and they deserve it. Because they did not ask to come into this world. We got to take responsibility. We, we, we good acting like a grown man for every damn thing except being responsible. We good with fucking. We good with cussing. We good with coming and going when we want to come and go. We good with trying to jack up the kids and and push the lady around and what and we man, man, we put our feet down the man. We good with everything except respect except accepting responsibility. We good with acting like a man in every other category except accepting responsibility. Man, you know how weak it sounds when a man say, Man, they ain't gonna help nobody. Oh man, he ain't gonna help nobody. I hear people saying stuff like Certain artists around ain't going to help this person. They ain't going to help nobody. Man, help your damn self. That don't even sound manly. Help yourself. You can do it. You got more in you than you think you got. You got more energy in you. You got more intelligence in you. More drive in you than you think you have. But you got to put your feet forward and do it. Don't look for nobody to do something for you. Hey, man, if somebody do something for you, man, count it as a blessing. That's icing on the cake. But if they don't, man, nothing venture, nothing gain. Take care of your business for yourself. Take care of your own kids. Man, you know how less of a man I'd feel for some other dude taking care of my kids? I got, I'm sitting around talking about somebody won't give me a job. Man, I'm finna go create something. I'm finna make something happen. I'm going to make something shake, baby. That's what a man do. We make it happen. There's all kind of ways to get paid out here, man.
You ain't got no money. Let's say you just got home from the pen. You ain't got a nickel. You ain't got two nickels to rub. Let me tell you how to get some money. Walk outside that door and go to your neighbor. Get cool with one of your neighbors. And ask your neighbor, can I use your lawn more? Can I borrow your lawn more? I pay you $10. In fact, you can just find a neighbor or a relative or somebody just say, can I borrow your lawnmower? Take that lawnmower, I can guarantee you, you walk down that street, you're going to find somebody with some high grass. Cut that damn grass. Now you got $30, $20, something. You got something. At the minimum, you can take care of your own hygiene. At the minimum, you can put some food in your mouth and you ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. Now you go do that again. Next thing you know, you got two yards to cut every week. Next thing you know, you got 10 yards to cut, 30 yards. Now you need some help. Now you got a business. See, we, our problem is that we too damn, we, we prideful about the wrong things. We, 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 we all prideful about somebody, what somebody think. Ooh, they ain't going to like me doing this job. Or that ain't going to look good. Let me tell you something, man. Anybody that look down on that, anybody that frown on that, man, they ain't going to mean you no good, no way. These ain't good people, no way. They, they don't have good spirits, no way. And they're probably the same type of person that you trying to impress. They're the main ones who ain't got nothing going for themselves. Why are you trying to impress them in the first place? Respect the process, man. This ain't... This ain't nobody sitting up on no high horse, man. This is somebody who love you for real, because I'm going to tell you something. I know a whole lot of dudes that's out there that ain't going to do nothing, ain't going to say nothing. They know some of y'all ain't got it, and they ain't going to say nothing. Now, I hear people say, well, damn, Willie D, man, you made that music, man. You telling us to, you told us to go out there, man. You made us want to go get it. Oh, I'm, I did? I made that music, huh? Okay, go back and listen to that music. Go back and listen to it, because I can guarantee you, damn near every single song we've ever made about the streets had a cautionary tale in it. Now, if you only took the bad part about the song and didn't listen to the rest of it, didn't listen to the rest of it, that's on you. That ain't on me. That's on you. So, if you're listening so intently like you say you are, well, why aren't you, you got homeboys who ain't got no brain, like the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. You got homeboys who ain't got no heart, like the Tin Man. You got homeboys who are cowards, like the Lion. Since you're listening to everything that we're saying and you're doing everything that, that people say in their music and entertainment, why your ass ain't walking down the yellow brick road looking for motherfucking the Wizard of Oz? Why you ain't looking for him? Why you ain't do, why you didn't do that? You watch Forrest Gump, why you ain't go get your goddamn shrimp boat? You watched uh, 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 Scarface, why you ain't start doing business with the Colombians? You watch Terminator? Why you ain't go out and kill uh, 300 people? See, people watch, people listen to what they want to hear. They hear what they want to hear, and they do what they want to do. They hear something that they like, they run with it. If they don't like it, they don't want to do it, they don't do it. You've seen movies where people jump off cliffs and shit. You ain't jumped off no cliff. People jump off of 60-story buildings. You ain't jumped off no 60-story building. No. So if we talk about selling dope, you sold that dope because you want to sell dope. They ain't have shit to do with no ghetto boys. They ain't have nothing to do with no NWA. You listen to Public Enemy. I don't see you get, I ain't see you listen to Public Enemy and go out there and, 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 and be, and be uh, responsible you ain't went on no, you ain't did no marches, you ain't boycotted nothing, you ain't met Farrakhan, but you're talking about you listening. Man, 
Don't pick and ch don't cherry pick. Go all the way with it. Man, you either all the way in or you all the way out with it. All this faking and all these damn excuses, man. We got to stop this shit, man. It's not manly. All of this, he ain't helping me. Man, I don't expect nobody to help me. I've never had, even when I was down, when I was way down, I never expected no help. If I got it, that's cool. But I never expected it. Never expected it, nor did I, nor did I, I, I request it. I'm like, man, this is what a man do. And I, and I was this way when I was a youngster, a kid, when I was a teenager. I had this type of mentality. So all I'm saying, man, is be responsible. If, if you're doing what you're doing for your kids and you're doing it and it ain't the legal way, fall back, man, because you're going to jail. I can guarantee you. I ain't wishing bad on you. I'm just being a realist. I'm telling you how the game is set up the way the system is set up. You're in the trap. If you're in the trap, whatever you're doing, understand this. They see you. If they can see what's going on in Kuwait, if they can see what's going on in Afghanistan, they got telescopes, man. They can see what's going on. If they haven't snatched you up, the only reason why they haven't snatched you up yet is because you just started or they got bigger fish to fry right now. And when things get a little slower and they just kicking in, like, man, man, let's go ride by there and, and snatch up uh, Junior. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Because they know you're not going to stop. It's addictive. They're going to get you. They're going to get you. Just understand that once you put that in your head, man, you're going to be all right. They're going to get you. If they don't get you, your homeboy that roll with you every day going to get you. He going to kill you. All the dudes that I know, most of the dudes that I know from Fifth Ward who was in the streets, got killed by dudes that was from Fifth Ward. So when you start talking that hood shit and throwing it up and all you do this, that, that, just remember, the hood don't love you. You got to love yourself and love these children. Love on them children real hard, man. Love on them babies real hard. They can make it without you, but it's going to be hard. No more talk.